more than ever before, we're living in an age of eco-awareness when it comes to our food. We eat organic, fair trade, ethically farmed products with as little plastic packaging as possible, and more of us are swearing off animal products altogether. More than three million people in the UK alone follow a vegetarian diet. And according to the UK Vegetarian Society, 2,000 people are going veggie every week. So you might be surprised and a little disgusted to learn about some of the animal products that are sneaking into seemingly innocuous vegetarian and vegan foods. Even if you're not a veggie, prepare to be grossed out at the animals you didn't know you were eating. Take the humble loaf of bread. When it's made in factories, huge volumes of dough need to be mixed to meet demand. To make this easier, producers use something to relax the dough, reducing the amount of time it takes to mix and making it more workable before baking. In most cases, this dough relaxant is a protein called L-cysteine, which can be made synthetically in the lab, but often has a more gruesome source duck feathers. Yeah? While you might think of feathers as being confined to your pillow, they're actually finding their way into your morning toast. It's not just feathers either. L-cysteine can also be derived from pig bristles and even human hair. These animal and human offcuts are boiled in acid before the protein is removed with electricity. It's sometimes listed on bread ingredients as E920, but might not be listed at all, since it's broken down during the baking process. The food standard authorities have declared it as safe, but somehow that doesn't decrease the gross factor of chowing down on a duck feather sandwich. Next up is cheese. It's not vegan, but you'd be forgiven for thinking it's vegetarian. After all, it's just milk, processed until it's lumpy and pressed together until it's hard. But it too is hiding a darker animal secret, because to get the milk to coagulate into more solid curds, a compound called rennet needs to be added. Rennet is basically a group of enzymes that helps to break down the proteins in milk to help it become insoluble and lumpy. The clue to where rennet comes from lies in where we usually use our enzymes to break down protein, the stomach. In fact, rennet has traditionally come from the stomach lining of cow calves, as they have an especially high concentration of these enzymes for breaking down their mother's milk. It's not all bad news though. Animal stomachs aren't finding their way into our brie and cheddar as much anymore, since animal rennet is actually quite rare and expensive. Instead, cheesemakers in Europe, and North America at least, are turning to less awful, awful sources of their enzymes. It's a more intensive process, but rennet can also be produced from plants, fungi, and even bacteria. Cheeses containing these types of non-animal rennet are labelled as vegetarian in supermarkets, so it's reasonably easy to avoid accidentally eating a baby cow, which is good to know. Now, here's one that you've probably heard about. Carminic acid, carmine or cochineal extract might be listed on the ingredient list of vividly red processed foods. Sometimes you might see the colouring E120 or natural red 4. All of these are the same thing compound that produces an intense red colour and which is actually derived from the crushed up bodies of insects. The cochineal insects live on the prickly pear cactus and are harvested and boiled on a huge scale. It takes about 80,000 cochineal insects, each about five millimetres long, to make half a kilo of red dye. Peru is the biggest producer and makes around 200 tonnes every year, which finds its way into our yoghurts, juices, sweets and even ketchup. So the next time you fancy a bit of insect on your chips, just reach for the red sauce. Next, if you like a nice pint of ale with your dinner, there's probably animal products in that too. Sorry. Beer is fermented using yeast, but it can be a challenge to separate the yeast out at the end of the brewing process. Given enough time, it will settle out on its own, but to speed up the process in industrial beer making, a product called icing glass is used to clump it all together into a gel that sinks to the bottom of a cask. That icing glass comes from the swim bladders of fish. Swim bladders are the organs that help them change their buoyancy to float up and down in the water. But when processed, they provide collagen, which is great for making yeast sink, but not so great for helping the fish swim around anymore. And finally, to the grossest surprise animal product of all time, 
We all like a bit of vanilla ice cream on a hot day, and we all know that the vanilla flavour comes from the vanilla pod, right? Well, yes, probably, but there's also a slim chance it came from a beaver's backside. Castorium is a compound that beavers secrete from their castor glands near their anuses to mark their territory. And remarkably, it smells delicious. It's been used in everything from medicine to perfume since the Roman times and has been a replacement for vanilla in food for at least 80 years. But extracting it is a labour-intensive process with just 140 kilos or so produced worldwide each year. That makes it expensive and very unlikely to be in your dessert, but still not impossible. And what's more worrying is that companies aren't obliged to tell you when they're using it, labelling it simply as natural flavouring. What could be more natural? If you suddenly feel the urge to give a vegan lifestyle a try, check out my video here to find out what would happen if the whole world turned vegan overnight. Let me know your comments below and give us a like and subscribe to Earth Unplugged for more shocking science and nature facts.